Hey guys, welcome back inside the stash. So it is time for another one of those videos that everyone loves, where I show off all of my new little bits and pieces. Uh, this will be a primarily decal related video. Oh, you're shocked. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait while you pick yourselves all up off the floor. Okay. You, you work on yourself back there in the back there. But for the rest of you, yeah. Um, so this is going to be a big batch of decals from our uh, good friend Frankie over at SK Decals. As well as a few other odds and ends I picked up from Spot Model. I also have a brand new resin multimedia kit from a company called a and Model Trucks that I want to show you guys. It's going to be part of a sort of three-part. It's never going to get finished, but in my head it's just wildly fantastic. Uh part of the whole dealership uh, diorama idea that we'll probably never see anything even resembling the light of day, but hey, we can talk about it and pretend like it's going to happen. So uh, let me flip the camera around so that you guys can take a look, and I'm not holding stuff in front of my face, and we'll be back in a flash. Oh, right, so let's take a look at things. Over here we have our Ford GT that we need to do our out-of-box review of before we can start working on. I've been uh, dry-fitting a lot of parts with that. Uh, trying to figure out the best way to sort of tackle uh, addressing the body as far as getting the, the uh, seams as tight as possible. You can't obliterate the seams because they're supposed to be there, but definitely want to make them uh, fit as well as possible. As there, with most uh, Revell kits anymore, there's some warping to deal with, so uh, we'll, deal, we'll delve into that on videos dealing with that. I'm not going to go into it right now, but... Uh, that's just what all this junk in the background is. So first up, we have a set of decals from uh, Diego over Racing Decals 43. This represents the, uh, I'm trying to think what the what team this is, P1 Motorsports at the 12 Hours of Sebring back in 2018. This is uh, fancifully known as the Chupacabra livery uh, for the uh, Mercedes-Benz AMG GT3, the Tommy kit, obviously. So... Uh, you paint the car silver, and except for pretty much a line that runs from these fender vents across, that you paint this a pink, and I do have uh, somebody, a couple of people have already whipped through this already, uh, a good idea of what color pink will match the decals here, and then you paint the mirrors green, it looks like a Tommy Park green, so that shouldn't be too terribly hard, uh, since that's a color that's just straight out of the bottle but otherwise yeah all the rest of this stuff is decals um it's a it's a pretty uh you know piece together front end it's not one just giant piece of decal so they're not uh they're not taking you that way but it is a very uh scary looking front end there and then everything else is pretty much uh you know standard fare in a livery these days livery package these days you know carbon <laughs> it's one thing about uh, not carbon fiber but uh, just the vinyl wraps that they do cars in anymore you know any colors available and uh, you can make the design as crazy as you want it to be <laughs> and then it's up to the folks making the decals to try to break it back apart again into something that can be printed out in a decal format so there is that that is available for anybody who happens to want one uh, i think that decal sheet actually came out about uh, three weeks a month ago at this point, and then we have our little uh, bundle of goodness from Spot Models. Gonna cover up my address here. Uh, I always love the fact that these guys have their own boxes. You know, so this is a little thinner box compared to uh, one of the other boxes that we got in recently. So it's just cool, very well packed, very very cool. And in here we have a couple sets of decals and a couple sets of uh, photo etch or not photo etch, but resin wheels. So. Let's try to get everything out of here. Probably should have took this stuff out first, but be that as it may, it is what it is. So the first thing we have in this box uh, are a couple of sets of resin wheels from Rescue Models. Now, Rescue Models is probably well known in the IPMS community as making airplane uh, conversion pieces. And they went out, and I'm not sure what the reason is behind this, if they're going to continue this. I'm sure it'll be a situation of how well it sells, obviously. But... Uh, to do some 124 scale wheels. There's three sets. Uh, one set I didn't get is for the Alfa Romeo uh, Guglietti, uh, the uh, Protar kit that was just reissued re by Italeri, the little roadster. Um, they've made new wheels for that. But I did get wheel wise, are, is this set here? It is the, get the whole thing in the screen there, the 
res the gravel wheel set for the Audi S1 and the B-Max kit. Uh, there are, right now, I believe, two sets of decals that these wheels will complement. They're uh, both by uh, decal costs. One is for uh, a race of champions livery, and the other one is for an Olympus rally, which was held in the state of Washington here in the United States. Um, so these are uh, out there. These look very, very nice. They're very crisply cast, very nice. They have a little bit of a, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's a little bit of a, a, an edge to the back, so they fit flush with the tire and then stop. Um, I, I guess the only sort of downside if you wouldn't consider that is there's only four of them, not five. I'm not sure that technically the spare would have been a, a, a uh, you know, a, also a gravel wheel in a gravel rally. Maybe they would have just ran one of the regular wheels until they could limp it to wherever they go. The whole weird thing about how many wheels, you, how many tires and wheels you can change or uh, tires you can change in a, in a given rally. Um, overall, like I said, they're, they're a nice set of wheels and... There's that. The other set, again by Rescue, is a set of Techno Magnesio uh, resin wheels. If I can get this to focus, that'd be great. I got too much going on in the background, I realize. Uh, so, all right, there we go. Focused, haha. -ha. So these uh, go to the BMW M3 Rally Kit by BMAX as well. Again, another really cool set of wheels. Another uh, very well done, very crisp, very minimal, like little bits and pieces of flash from in between the wheel uh spokes. I mean, that's just what you expect in a resin kit. Um, they did do a lot of the cleanup, but there's always a little, just a little bit more, a little uh, like a diamond needle file down in there. Uh, we'll take care of all that. And uh, these go to uh, several sets of decals that are available for the M3 Rally Kit. I got one set I'm going to show you here in a second, but they had like two or three sets of these wheels in stock over at Spot Model, and I decided to just, you know, for like, I don't even remember how much these things even cost. I'm not sure it'll tell me in here or not. Uh, it doesn't. But <laughs> for like 8 or 10 bucks, or maybe it was like closer to 12 or 15 somewhere in there, for a set of wheels that are really, really well done, uh, yeah, that was not a, not a not a real hard decision to make. I believe you can buy these directly from Rescue Models. Their website is right here. A little focus. Rescuemodels.com. Nice, simple, easy. They are in Hungary. And like I said, you can buy all three sets of wheels directly off them. I think Spot Model still has a couple sets of them in, in there if you want to go through them. But, um, you know, those are your options. And then in the decal side of things here, I just started picking up some sets of Riley decals for things, for, for projects in the future. Um, even if I don't necessarily uh, end up using them all. But this is a set from Renaissance for the Opel Manta 400 uh, Group B car. This will do the... Rally D uh, Ipes and the what is the other one? The Rally, the Catalonian Rally for Bastos. So, this is a pretty much a, a pre cut set in the, in the sense where you don't, uh, uh, um, I think it's this. No, it's not the set, it's a set of uh, Fort Escort ones that uh, Paul's doing over at ISM for a uh, Bastos livery for the Escort. These are pretty much, uh, you know, cut to the to the sizes they need to be, so you don't have to necessarily go through a lot of uh, measuring and things like that. And this is a pretty much a decal student scheme thing, although I think I might paint my roof white and not rely on trying to put this big white decal over a red roof. Uh, you see here on sort of the spot model sort of covering the <laughs> covering the goodies here, but the matters of Bastos liver in here, but you get the idea. It's mostly a red scheme, just with some white areas. Um, actually, I think that uh, you probably need to cut some of the stuff in the back here, because obviously this is not going to fit over your your wheel arches, but be that as it may. Um, this is what the, the livery looks like. This is the fifth place uh, for the uh, however you pronounce that. <laughs> I know, I'm terrible. And then, it's kind of hard to see, but basically, the decal scheme for the uh, second place, uh, Condroza, I guess it is, right? Or Condros, Condros Rally, is uh, pretty much the same thing, just different numbers and different uh, placards. I'll hold this right side up here, you get your Condros Rally license placards there, and your... Uh, Yipes, <laughs> yipes, <laughs> or, or Ipris Rally, I think it's Ipris, actually. The Ipris Rally, things are there. 
So, overall, uh, it's a nice looking sheet. I know that Renaissance has in the past had issues with, with their whites not being necessarily as uh, vibrant as you need them to be, or more likely they're not double printed the way what most whites are. So, again, that makes me want to paint the roof white and not deal with this decal. But uh, we'll see wh where that all shakes out when we get around to it. Uh, right now, I don't have any extra uh, Manta kits in the first place, so there's that. Uh, another Bastos livery that I picked up, and this is also a set of Renaissance decals. This is for the Peugeot 206 World Rally Championship kit from Tamiya. Now, you guys probably remember last video I did, maybe, maybe not, I picked up this uh, Peugeot's, the, let me do the box end here, it's the 2001 version. I did some research on the Peugeot 206, wondering why Tommy had made so many of them, and it turns out that the Peugeot 206 won the either the Driver or the Constructors Championship from 2000 through 2003. So that set me out on buy, buy, buying spree, trying to get the other ones, and in the process, not paying really close attention to what I was bidding on, I accidentally bought a second one of the 2001 kits, along with the 2000, 2001, 2000, or the 2000, 2002, 2003, and 1999 kits. So, facing the fact that I bought another Peugeot Rally kit, and the fact that those Peugeot Rally kits really aren't that expensive, so it's not like I, I stole one and now I can sell it for a lot of money here in the United States, I just decided I would go ahead and pick up a set of decals for one instead, and I love my tobacco liveries. So this is the Rally Catalonia. I knew I had a Catalonia Rally set of decals in here for 2001. And you get uh, this scheme here. So it's an all red car with the Bastos livery going up the sides. Um, and you see here, it's pretty much an, a, a, the Bastos livery going up the side. It's kind of hard to see in, in reflection of where the carrier film is. But it's one gigantic decal. Um, I'm thinking that I will more than likely chop it after the S and before the B to sort of make uh, make this fit a little bit better. Obviously this is reverse. This is this one over here where you chop it at the S in front of the B. But Because trying to get this to fit around here and the bass does to get a fit over the fenders and around the door handles and then get this to fit around the, the front end here. There's a, there's a, a prominent door uh, striker, if you want to call it that, one of the things you put on a door to keep the door from getting dented by shopping carts, basically. There's a prominent door striker here. It just seems like a little bit to ask this big sheet of decal to go across all of that without having an issue. Plus, you got to like, cut it right about here so that the bottom of that folds underneath. Not a lot else going on with this uh, as far as this decal sheet goes. But it's a pretty cool livery nonetheless. And there's really no way to show it other than this to say, otherwise half of it ends up being upside down. But, yeah, I mean, I have the Bastos. Uh, actually, I wonder. There's another set of Bastos livery for the for the uh, Manta that I want to pick up. I've got the Bastos livery for this. Uh, the of course the the BMW M3 comes in a Bastos livery to begin with. Bastos, if you're not familiar with it, is a cigarette. So uh, yeah, these decals look like they're really nice. I mean, I know they're an older pair, older set. They're not as uh, not so much thought out, but designed as well. I think if you design these now, you'd probably you know do a little bit of a different. Uh, clear coat of application to this with you know the carrier film when you're do doing decal design it's just called a clear coat I think the clear coat you probably think about it a little bit more in terms of how you break that up uh, To make it fit easier, but overall everything's in register It's all very nice crisp and sharp and stuff like that So happy with the quality of the decals and then lastly out of the uh, spot model box We got this which is the deco cast set for the m3 the Saruman competition uh, livery camel uh, rally car, and I could build like three different rallies. These are all Spanish rallies, which of course, Stucco Cost being in Spain makes sense. There are a couple of them that they won this Principe de Astoris or Astoris and the uh, Rally Veil down here. I think we're going to be doing this one, I'm pretty sure. One of these two sets of, of uh, rallies requires the, the Techno Magnesio wheels, which is why we bought them. Uh, one of these other ones does as well, but we, you know. If I've got the choice between building a winning car and not building a winning car, when all of the livery is basically the same, the only difference between them are, are like rally placards because the Camel livery is the same. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with that. This gives you a basic idea for this is the Principe de Torres or Astorius 
89 this is not the winning car but it gives you the general idea you know paint it camel yellow throw some decals on it. it's not a whole heck of a lot because back in the 1980s 1990s there wasn't a whole heck of a lot you know vinyl vinyl printing was not exactly the cheapest thing in the world back then it was just coming into fashion and not having to hand paint the cars and stuff like that so uh, like I said, you can build four, the four different rallies out of it. The principal difference with these are like the placards on, like I said, the numbers, the, the rally plates, uh, the actual license plates for the car and stuff like that are different. And, uh, these are speed line, set of speed line rims, which again is something else you have, you would have to go back and order because this is still not the right set of wheels for the, for the rally. But trust in me, there are, I think it's this 1991 Principe de Astoris, uh, cars, the one we're going to be building out of this sheet of, this sheet of decals with that set of uh, resin wheels. So there is that. Let me go ahead and just box this back up and move it off to the side so it's not in the way. And then we're going to go through the SK decals because we're going to make you wait for that re we're going to make you wait for that resin kit. Um, just make you hang out as long as we can. So in here, we got a couple of uh, filler sheets. First up, this right here, and ironically, uh, you know, it's a set of decals that no, that very few people are going to need a, have a need for anymore because of the fact that the 787B sold out before it was distributed outside of the outside of Japan. But this is a nice small little fill-in sheet for the reissue of the uh, 787B. All of these things are uh, pieces of decals that are missing. From the reissue, that doesn't have the the reissue does not have any Dunlop logos. Doesn't always have any tire logos. It's missing all of the uh, the uh, there's a Dunlop down here with these Brumbo things. It's in white. You can't see it, but uh, the Sibby livery as well as the scrutineering entry things, all missing off of the reissue because licensing. So Frankie went ahead and did this design. Unfortunately, like I said, the kit sold out. And now if you're looking to purchase one of the new ones, you're looking at probably paying more than $50 for it, which is ironically more than the original ones cost at this point. So yeah, I have an original one and I have a set of charge livery for, um, Studio 27 for it, but it does not have these little Dunlop logos. And for like the $5 this cost, I'll just use the Dunlop logos out of it. And then we have this sheet here, which is another little fill-in sheet. This is a option decal sheet, if you will, for the TS050 for the 2017, or 2018, excuse me, 24 Hours of Le Mans. Uh, the kit as it comes, aside from having those weird, goofy, dry transfer backwards Michelin logos, does not have any of the WEC placards the car comes with, nor does it have the 24 Hours of Le Mans logo or the Total Oil placards that go on top of your numbers. So there are your numbers for the 7 car, your numbers for the 8 car, the WECs, because you need uh, three of those on every car, replacement of the tire logos, and then there's just little bits and pieces up here that are a little slightly more detailed, better and register things than come with the actual decal sheet. So there is that. Uh, that'll be definitely used when I go and build my TSO 50. Now my I have a set of decals. You guys know that I'm, you know, very slowly but surely doing running a decal company into the ground. Uh, that are very similar to this. Only ours only has one WEC livery. It has the DHL placards over the numbers because it is for the uh, WEC cars that ran after the 24 Hours of Le Mans. I also have replacement tire logos on mine and then i have a couple of the associate sponsorship changes as well and those decals of course are available should anyone ever be interested in them all right so going into these decals here i want to do them in a little bit of a certain order so i'm going to reorganize them because i was looking at them and then i didn't put them back the way i had them that's, 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 that's this and that all right so first up we have our uh and I'm missing one, so it's either still in this envelope or it's stuck or something. Let me see here. That's that, that's that, that's that, that's that, that's that, that's that. Aha! Here it is. So we have our liveries, what I was saying, <laughs> for the four GTs. These are all going to be your 24 hours of Le Mans cars. There are three sheets total. Uh, two of the sheets will do two cars apiece. And the Keating uh, car is on its own sheet. So this is up front. The Ganassi Team UK cars, and this, of course, is the livery we're going to be putting onto this mess of a Ford GT back here, the black car. Uh, 
So one of the part of the reasons I hadn't done the review and haven't started on the kit was I was waiting for the decals to come in. These actually came in two weeks ago, but work has been an insane asylum ever since then. But uh, this is a situation where you just paint the car black and the decals will do everything else for you. Uh, that's the main reason why I'm looking at trying to figure out how to assemble the rear body the best I can because with these decals, with the white being all sort of self-inclusive, I don't need to uh, paint the car in halves like you do with the tritone. All of the car is black. But in order to paint underneath the buttress and paint in this inner thing here, you'd it's almost like you have to prime the whole thing in two pieces, then paint the underside of this buttress and the underside of here, then glue it all together, and then paint the whole thing black, which I know sounds like ridiculously drawn out, but at least with the the first kit that I've opened out of the seven that I have, I've noticed that this this seam back here doesn't exactly go together without, you know, it's, it's almost like an aircraft assembly. You're not going to need to put a little bit of glue, clamp it down, hold it, put a little bit of glue clamp and the whole way around here in order to get this to fit because in the real car there is a seam on both these sides i see a lot of people try to obliterate the seam that goes down here but the real car has a seam because that's how the whole back of the car comes off in order for them to uh work on the engine and stuff like that the rear suspension so you can't close that seam off because it really does exist but uh, just sort of slapping the body halves together, the seam there is much larger than it also would realistically be. So, uh, with this being one color, I'm trying to figure out the easiest way to sort of address painting the underside area of these flying buttresses, uh, both on the underside of the actual underside and then as well as this uh, valley here, and then putting it together and then painting the whole thing. Because I would like to address these gaps as plastic on plastic, and sort of weld them together with liquid cement rather than trying to super glue the thing together after the paint's on here and frosting the paint or whatever because there really aren't any decals that go down in here to cover that kind of thing. So anyway, there's the black car. This this uh, will also do the number 67 car, which uh, is the, let's see, which car would that be? That would also be the... Um, see, the powder blue car... And the other, in the tricolor are the Team US car. So what is it? The, I gotta look at my picture of what these cars are. I should have thought about this beforehand. Let's see here. This is 66. So this is the black car and the red car. The red car also is all white stripes. And pretty much the primary differences between the black car and the red car, of course, are the colors. <laughs> Everything else, all these decals in between, are the same, more or less. So, you know, so you do driver, cha driver changes and, and your number changes and small little bits and pieces. But this will do the black car or the red car. Obviously, you can't do both out of one sheet. you got to buy two. So, we've got two of those. And then we have the Team US decals, which do the powder blue car as well as the tricolor car. Now, you can see here, there's a set of decals popping out the bottom here. So I flip this over, it'll make sense to you. So this is the powder blue car with all the red accents. And then you have the tricolor car, which is all white. So you see, here's your numbers up here. What this sheet back here is, is all of these stripes in red. So these red decals, all of this stuff in red is here. It's on this little sheet here. I'm not going to take the decals out. But there's a full... Uh, set of decals is this wide and it's as tall as the package of all of the stripes in red so don't worry about having a two-tone this red and what is very nice about this uh in terms of the all these decals being in white guys and, and it being a huge sheet of decals in white this is all of the white that's on the tricolor car so you only have to paint this car two colors the blue and the red all of the white that is on the tricolor white car is on this decal sheet so it's no longer a tritone it's now a two-tone which is a much easier, as far as I'm concerned, thing to deal with. So two of those, because you've got to build both team cars. And then the last Ford GT that we have to talk about is probably the most popular one, the one that everybody knows about, and that is the Keating car. The Keating Motorsports, the Pro-Am entry, the car that won Pro-Am and then was disqualified for having too big of a gas tank. Also the tricolor car, disqualified for having too big of a gas tank. So uh, a couple of different places, three, I think there's three places you can get paint for this now. Uh, so the purple paint, not an issue as far as that goes. All of the decals are, of course, here. Uh, all your wind liveries and your running Michelin men and all the stuff. Very, very nice set of decals, as all of Frankie's work is. Um, 
we, I take a little pride in this because we'll help them, you know, do a couple of things as far as figuring out what, lo what logos were, what uh, what certain things were. Um, these decals, you know, came out a little later than everybody else's did as far as, uh, you know, first kind of thing. And th and for that, you get several very, very minor, but very, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to be anal retentive about it, important pieces of decal that are missing off of some other people's decals. Also, you see here a little piece of photo etch sticking out of the corner. Let's see if we can tap it down a little bit. These guys are in every single one of these four GTs, all of these other two sheets, as well as this one. And these are photo etch replacements for these front canards on the kit. Now, if you have one of these kits and you know about it, you know that the front canards are molded into the front of the body. These are on here. I didn't glue them. They come that way. If you're going to use any of these sheets, and this includes the sheets, guys, by the way, for the that uh, Diego did for the 24 Hours of Daytona cars, they have these wrap areas around the front, right? These things go in this, go on this right here. <laughs> I know I'm covering it up, but it goes right there, wraps around, and this these tails connect to the bottom of the chassis, which has the grill in it. Well, it's awful hard to get those to lay on these, right? So this, as well as, we've talked about it in the past, as well as the Studio 27 sheet, which also has the photo etch pieces on it, but this <laughs> this photo etch comes with the decals. This is obviously a much sold separately piece of item. Uh, allows you to cut these offending. <laughs> They're the right size and the right shape, really. They're probably a little too small. Eh, they might be the right size. But anyway, allows you to cut these uh, offending canards off flatten all that out, paint it, and put the decals on, and then put the photo etch pieces on here. And you do not have to slice your slice and dice your decals to get them to fit. All very nice and neat. Like I said, this, this sheet of photo etch comes with all three sets of these four GTs. Now, moving on to the GT3 stuff. And there are several sheets here. Um, let's see, make sure they got everything sort of in connection, if you will. That's the, those two sheets are one series, that's one series, and there's this. So, sort of keeping in the theme of the IMSA and whatnot, we have this sheet, which is the Ray Hall uh, Letterman, Layman Letterman, Le Lerman Letterman? I can't remember what the middle name is or pronounce it at this point, obviously. Uh, sheet for the 2017 IMSA series. This is a GTD car. Um, these are... Specifically done to the, uh, let's see, here we got a little bit of a focus issue. Come on, focus. There we go. Uh, these are specifically done for the Petit Le Mans race, which is the last endurance race of the IMSA season. Um, the decals in here, guys, are pretty much uniform in the sense that both the 24 and the 25 use the same uh, schnitzer, tricolor, sh uh, swoop thing going on with all of the, the trimming. The only difference really with it are the, are the numbers and the fact that the 25 car is white and the 24 car is black. But otherwise, the decals, you know, are the, pretty much the same as far as all of this uh, for both cars. Or at GTD, GT Le Mans. GTD is a different uh, thing. But at any rate, <clears throat> the white car, which also uses this very cool... Uh, B uh, thing up here, and I think there's another piece of, it, of the decal in here as well. For the anniversary of the fact that this was the, uh, I'm trying to think what, how many, uh, what the actual anniversary was as far as how many, uh, what year it was. <laughs> I can't think of it right now. But this logo goes on the roof of the white car. If you take this logo, the, the, the white car, the number 25 car won the Petit Le Mans, right? So this livery as it stands is a winning car. If you take the B off the top and just leave it off and cut one of the drivers off, and I can't remember which one it is right now off the top of my head, this would also represent the two other races that the 25 car won during the 2017 season. This black car, the 24 car, also won two races. It won the Detroit Grand Prix and it won the uh, race up at Most Sport, which is the Canadian Motorsports Park. And again, I'd have to figure out which one you cut off. I think it might be Nikki Katzberg. Uh, if you cut off one of these drivers, this car, as it ran, this black scheme also won two races in 2017. Didn't do you know, that great at Petit Le Mans, but it did win two other races. So that's something to consider with these decals as well. You don't necessarily have to build the Petit Le Mans car. You can build podium cars from other races by removing one of the drivers because the, the uh Endurance races require three drivers, where the regular races, the just normal sprint races, only require two. So, two sheets to do team cars. 
And then we have from the Macau series, and this is the last of the 2017 Macau GT cars, which is going back a little bit at this point. Uh, well, really only one season because 2018, uh, the 2019 one is until November. But these are the Team AAI Motorsports cars. These are very, very cool uh, liveries as far as I'm concerned. And Frankie did a really good job, I think, of breaking down what he's giving you as far as decals go. But these very cool powder blue cars um, with some awesome, there we go, some very interesting like Chinese uh, sponsorships to them. Um, what this decal sheet will do is you paint the car that's blue and, you know, It'll take a little bit of research to figure out what the right exact color blue would be. But all of the white that is on here ends up being a decal. So you only have to paint the car one color. Very cool. This is uh, Whitman's car. And then there's also the decals to do the other team car, which uh, life of me can't think of who drove that right off the top of my head, which is terrible. But uh, it does build, like I said, the other uh, car because, like, the hood here, this sponsorship's the same. The nine, It is 90, yeah, 90. Obviously, you replace out all the 90 stuff like that. And there are some, you know, differences in the uh, associate sponsorships between the two cars that ran that year. But uh, these are the... Uh, there's one more M3, or one more M6, rather, excuse me, that we need to do for 2017. And there's the debate between me and him as far as what we should do with it because it's basically the Team Row Motorsports car. And at this point... Uh, the debate would be just to completely redo the Team Row livery to put on the set of decals or just do some filler decals the way we did with the original Road Motorsports car from 2016 where it's a very small set of decals that just changed the things for the actual race. Um, because at this point, the Rowell car, the 24 Hours of, of Spa car, is a little out of date as far as, you know, getting one. So, yeah, again, do we do the whole thing or do we just sort of let it go? I don't know. We'll see. And then next up, these are all M6 decals, by the way. If you don't like BMWs, you came to the wrong place. Uh, this is the Team Walking Horse 24 Hours of Spa winning car. So uh, for people who build spa cars, I know a lot of people uh, talked to one guy online not too long ago that all he does is build cars from the from spa. He doesn't build cars from any other racetrack, which is very cool because uh, that can be a little bit of a problem sometimes. There really aren't that many 24 Hours of Spa vehicles available uh, necessarily. But anyway, this is their their uh, winning livery. What Frankie did here is he basically gave you most of the colored parts. You're going to paint this flat black. I think you might have to paint the roof white. Um, but leaving this being uh, an open area where this is um, not covered by a decal lets you build the car that has the white decals on there uh, instead, which ran this year's 24 Hour Spa, has run some BLN series races and other things like that, which would be some things that I personally will be addressing. We'll be giving you some filler sheets to go with this decal sheet, much like our uh, 24 Hour Spa Battlefield car. You need the decals to plus my decals to change them. So we're going to be doing some uh, filler sheets for this livery uh, as time goes along. But like I said, here's an idea here where you get all of your uh, colors for the car. This is the back bumper back here. Um, all of the colors for the car, and then this is sort of like the cutout for the side, and this part right here would be this flat black piece in the in here. So doing them in this fashion uh, certainly makes it a lot easier for someone like me who wants to offer you some uh, option decals as far as other races and things like that, because uh, this set of this this color this low this whole sort of generalized. Uh, layout is the same for the cars in 2018 and 2019. Uh, we can do the 10 hours of Suzuka car with this. We can do some of the VLN cars with this. A lot of things that can be done with this basic outline. Are you going to Frankie, getting this set of decals, and then picking up an extra like 10 buck set of decals from me to convert this into a wide variety of other things? So here's your sort of your uh, bottom stuff has all of your printing stuff. Your walking horse livery and your total quartz stuff and things like that. So that is very cool. Uh, just it's a cool set of decals just to do as that car, which we will be doing at some point as well. Then we have a couple of VLN uh, liveries. This is the walking horse motorsports car. This is the ninth race of the year. They won the pole position with this car. And ninth race of the year is the last race of VLN in 2018. And this is just very cool because it has the entire... Um, Nordschleife 
uh, whole racetrack basically on here. Um, it you know, it has the entire length of the racetrack on the side, parts of it on the roof, parts of it on the hood. It's just a very cool livery. Uh, again, it's a walking horse car. You just paint the car. The car looks kind of, well, I don't know, what do you want to call this? Uh, silverish, but I think the car was actually white in real life. It might be a pearl white because the 30, this car came back again, sort of being a blank white car uh, this year. And it's sort of a, looks gray, but it's sort of a pearl white color that the uh, M6 came in. But anyway, uh, this, like I said, here's your, your decals here on this side. And so it is a it's just a cool, uh, cool, cool livery. So that's there. And then also in the 2018 uh, Rao Motorsports, or not Rao Motorsports, but well, Rao is the title sponsor, but also the VLN car. This is the Schnitzer Motorsports car. This is the 2018 uh, Team Schnitzer car. So uh, this is another set of decals, which we will be uh, working with to give you some other options as far as other conversions, because the Schnitzer car in this pattern uh, ran a whole bunch of things in 2018 as well as this year and uh, we can offer you know from uh, from my perspective offer a, a conversion for a number of things including the 10 hours of Suzuka which just ran is in my back of my mind right now uh, I think this car also ran this year with this this striping package also ran this year's uh, 24 hours of, of uh, Nurburgring and things like that so uh, so definitely something that we'll be uh, doing a deep dive research-wise into figuring out what else we can do with this, uh, livery-wise. But that's another cool uh, vehicle there. Um, should be somewhere in here. Um, I'm sort of kicking around loose in here is the uh, the M Sport logo for the roof and things like that. So uh, very very cool. Uh, that covers that. And then last but not least is the one decal uh, sheet that was my original request. Now, guys who know me know that the Haribo decals for the AMG GT3 are my pet project. That was one of the things that me and Frankie worked together with the first time. And I said, hey, you know, I have this idea. Why don't I, you know, why don't I help uh, do some decals for you? Help you, you know, with the research for them. Uh, I offered to pay for them at one point until the Haribo car obviously sold out. So they didn't need me to pay for it. That was just a really good set of decals to do, as it turned out. But this was the first set of decals I pushed, and the issue that we had with them was printing, technically speaking, the striping with this, because it is metallic, and it is chrome, and it is a pain in the ass. But through perseverance, uh, Frankie had figured out exactly how to go ahead and get that done, and so with that, we have the PlayStation livery car. So this is probably uh, one of the more famous M6s in the world, only because it's in Gran Turismo. It's one of the cars they give you in the game. Um, this is the 2016 uh, 24 Hours of Nurburgring car. It is the best finishing car as far as the big race goes. Uh, this PlayStation livery was also in the 2016 VLN series. Ran the 2017, 2018, and 2019 24 Hours of Nurburgring. It also ran, ran in the 2017, 2018, and 2019 VLN series. Uh, this PlayStation uh, livery has been a mainstay of the Nurburgring, really, for Walking Horse Motorsports. Uh, I know that, uh, I think it's DS Colors, which is in Europe someplace, is doing, planning to do some paint for this, this, this they're calling it Walking Horse Blue. Um, it's a very difficult color blue to sort of nail it down because depending on what the color, depending on what the conditions were at the racetrack, it's a light blue, it's a dark blue, depending on the sunny, it's cloudy. It's one of those things where, uh, if you got together 10 reference shots of this car, it's going to be a different shade of blue in like seven of them. Uh, but, uh, very, very, very excited. This is another set of decals that we will be, uh, employing our research division into, doing the conversions for the other races this car ran. Right now, I have um, about 95% of the research done to convert it into the 2016 VLN car, which is one of the actual ones that's still running the Premio badges rather than the uh, Rao, this Rao oil badges that ran later in 2017 to, to current. So uh, it's just been a, a... It's just a sort of a matter of figuring out what VLN race to, to do it as. So I got to go back through the VLN 
uh, records and see what maybe what race it finished best in. Uh, because I have pictures of the car from like the third race, the fifth race, and the last race, and associate sponsorships are all different throughout them. And the, the last race, they say like "thank you, fans," and "see you next year" on the cars and stuff like that, which is a very cool thing and something I like to include. But then there are some associate sponsorships that run up the side of the hood here, and I cannot find for the life of me good research photos of what the what those uh, logos are. So I have something I could probably throw together to do the third race because it's pretty much uh, this livery almost in its entirety with a slightly different front sponsorship because on the VLN cars, they are not uh, endurance race cars. They are just regular ones. So these are not driving lights. They're the little carbon fiber placard inserts. And so there's a Castrol Edge logo here and there's some universal wheel logos that go up here uh, either on the hood or on these... Uh, Thunder vents as far as uh, a little hood sponsorship, but otherwise you pretty much are just using this car and replacing the number boards. So like I said, a little more research needs to be done into seeing if I can get a complete shot of any of the cars front, back, and, and sort of kind of overhead of any of the race cars, or else I'm just going to have to sort of divvy up, figure out what I think the car looked like, uh, and go from there because I have a source of pictures for like the 2017, 2018, and, and 2019 cars. But the 2016 car, there's photos out there, but they're not exactly the greatest. Even Walking Horse Motorsports' own photos of their own cars uh, are kind of dicey. They didn't, you know, they're not taking pictures of cars so somebody can replicate their car. They're just like, hey, here's our car at this race. Here's our driver. Oh, yay. You know, good times were had by all. So I sort of held this. These uh, decal sheets, they've been out for uh, close to a month now because I wasn't allowed to talk about this one because it wasn't technically out yet, but it is now. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about it and say how fantastic it is. And you can all high five me later for the ability to have it because uh, there was a debate about whether or not we we're going to still do that because it was so old. And I was like, nah, you don't understand. That car is famous <laughs> and uh, it's probably one of the most requested M6 liveries I get is, is that one. So... All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up with the multimedia resin kit. You guys have all been great sports. Some of you probably fast-forwarded ahead until this showed up, but hey, if you stayed the whole time, bravo on you. So we have the A&N Model Trucks 5.5-ton recovery truck MS. MS here is some licensing going around. In fact, this is obviously a Mercedes Sprinter. Now, this is a German EU-based a recovery truck. It's got some under under ride protection here that we don't put on our trucks in the United States. Um, this trying to figure out what this could could legally haul has been a very interesting trip in research in its own right. Because this uh, the Mercedes Benz forty five hundred has a payload capacity of like just sly, just shy of eight thousand pounds. It also has a towing capacity. There's a stinger here. You can't really see it, but there's a stinger for this flat for this flatbed, uh, or a tow bar, depending on what you want to call it. We called them stingers back in the day when they first started coming out because they just sort of came right came out the back of the car like a stinger on a sting on a uh, not a stingray, but well, a stingray, but also a uh, scorpion. But uh, it has a towing capacity of seven thousand pounds as well. Now this. This deck, if it's an extruded aluminum deck, like most flatbeds are these days, probably weighs about two tons, which cuts the capacity of the truck down to about maybe 5,000 pounds or a little over, or some, somewhere between 4,500 and 5,000 pounds, depending on exactly how much all this crap weighs. And then you still have your towing capacity back here. Now, I think if you put a two-ton car on this deck and you took, hooked a three-ton car to the back of it, there's probably a pretty good chance that this thing wouldn't go down the road more than about 10 miles an hour because this Mercedes-Benz Sprinter in real life has a V6 diesel that is rated at 188 horsepower, which is probably why the capacity of this thing is a little bit lower than you would expect it to be. Like a 4,500 or what we would uh, Dodge would still use the 4500 uh, logos, but a, but a 450 uh, F450 Ford or a uh, Chevy slash GMC 4500 would probably you know you could probably put close to 15,000 pounds of payload in it. So 
it's kind of like I said, it's, it's, it, this being an ex if this is an extruded aluminum deck, even if it's a steel deck, but if this is an extruded aluminum deck, you're doing it for weight savings. The payload of one of these decks is twelve thousand pounds, but that of course doesn't make this whole truck be able to haul that. It's 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 very interesting. But when you consider it, forty five hundred pounds will pretty much haul anything other than like a full size SUV. And when you start talking about EU cars, there's not a whole hell of a lot of things that weigh that much. I mean, the only real full-size SUVs, because you're only going to have full-size trucks, because full-size trucks in, you know, EU would be this, with a pickup bed on the back of it, basically. But a full-size SUV in the European Union, you're looking at things like Range Rovers and Land Rovers, and then you're looking at, like, the Volkswagen Group things, the... Uh, Audi, uh, the Audi, I can't, which I can't think of the name, the actual model number, but the Audi is a full-size SUV, Audi, which is shared with the Volkswagen platform, which is shared with the Lamborghini platform, which is also the Porsche, uh, what the, uh, I can't think of what the Porsche SUV is, but all those cars are effectively more or less the same thing with different different outside body skins on them, and yeah, those probably weigh about five 6,000 pounds when they're all said and done with but you wouldn't be towing it with this in the first place. This is for other things. So what you get in this big old box is a whole heck of a lot of what I was telling people is a whole heck of a lot of cat toys because this is an amazing amount of resin in plastic bags. Just a lot of resin. This right here will be your deck, most of your flatbed stuff in here. There's two pieces of this deck uh, so your, you know, your flatbed deck, this is the tail back here. This is the sort of the kick out to the end. So, yeah. So basically twice this size. So your deck is going to be about yay long. Whoops, I'm not in the camera. Your deck's going to be about yay long. So, I mean, it's a fairly big deck. Right. Eh, eh. Well, about this long, anyway. So, uh, yeah, it's a fairly decent sized deck. You're going to be able to put most anything on it. And then you get uh, a couple of sheets of photo etch. This is the photo etch for the truck itself. It has some also also for the tow bed because this thread stuff is supposed to be your winching material, which you know uh, I don't necessarily think I'm going to go quite as far as going through and, and really winding out an entire winch with it. But you got your uh, various truck things in here, back of the grill, back of the your uh, wheel hubs and stuff like that, and then. Here's the, you know, the, the sight side of it, basically. And you got your light bars and your headlights and all your clear resin, your glass and stuff like that. And then there is this big mamma jamma sheet of brass. Well, that's brass photo etch as well. But this big sheet of brass photo etch, which I'm trying to get out of here without bending all up, which is the, like, this is the header to the tow truck. And, uh, you know, some other pieces Parts of this is built, bending out the winch and and some supports and stuff like that. So this is a big old piece of brass photo etch. Um, so there, that's in there. And then you have your actual cab to the truck, which looks preposterously out of proportion because everything is in tiny bags of small pieces. So this looks like it's ridiculously large, but it's a full size van, and that's pretty much accurate. Now they, I would have you know preferred personally, if they sort of cleaned out a little bit of these window castings, because you need to take out this here and this here, but not this, because that's the mount to your mirror, and then obviously the windshield casting, and then you have the casting for your grill, as well as your lower grill, so these need to be taken out as well, and then you have on, you know, obviously on your other side, you have the same thin things, your window, and your back window. Um, cleaning up this back here could have been better, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, the only real problem I see with the resin is that there are a couple of, which are not going to focus, obviously, but a couple of uh, pinholes. There, there, it went and focused perfectly. A couple of pinholes right down here on this bottom uh, kicker panel for the uh, bottom of the driver's door. I mean, the rest of it's kind of rough around the bottom, but, I mean, that's what you kind of expect, and it's not really that big of a deal. And you don't have that same, you know, issue on this side of the mold. So, a little bit of filling here that I would have preferred not to do, but overall, I mean, it's... It's pretty decent. The interrupting greasy thumbprint on the side of the car. I didn't really, didn't really pay attention to the first time. But overall, it's straight. It's pretty decently cast overall. All of the uh, mold lines and things like that are not mold line, but all of your door openings are are you know straight for the most part, uh, as straight as they can be for being accurate. But I mean, they got nice depth to them. They're not going to disappear under paint. 
And, uh, you know, overall, it's a pretty decent casting. A little bit of cleanup preferred, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna murder them for not cleaning out their windows and then you have two instruction sheets that come with this one is the actual instruction sheet to the truck with the long wheelbase frame and then you have the instruction for the recovery body they do sell this separately it's um, I think it's about 80 bucks for the recovery bed for all of this together shipped from Latvia because these guys yes in Latvia why am in the world am I buying things from Latvia why do American people not make cool stuff like this but be that as me buying this from Latvia together was $214 shipped so it is not by any stretch of the imagination a cheap thing whatsoever but the decal the instructions for this uh, I try to get them on here <laughs> are pretty concise pretty uh, are nicely drawn I mean for resin a lot of times you get a whole bunch of bags of resin you'd be told like Godspeed good luck trying to figure all that mess out um, it actually goes into like very detailed instructions on how to paint these lights that go on the top of the bed and things like that so uh, the photo etch pieces are all nicely called out they are they tell you how to bend them as far as what they should look like when you're done. A lot of the uh, things in here, uh, let me see if I can find a good example of that, uh, like this, are held in here with like resin bolts and things like that. So that's kind of interesting. This, th this recovery thing is designed to operate. I don't necessarily know how, I, I almost feel like I need to go out and buy a, like a lifetime supply of white lithium grease. Because to me, all this stuff is like resin on resin as far as... Uh, you know, what is working. Um, you know, so I I don't know how many times I'd necessarily, you know, slide it in and out and up and down and stuff like that. I'm not going to play with it in the first place. But uh, let me put this, let me get this off of here so I don't bend it. And this off of here so I don't bend it. And then we'll put the body back in here. And release. As you see, you can see here, here's a bunch of these resin bolts <laughs> that hold things together. And put all this stuff back in here. And we'll go, and here's the, like I said, the instructions for the truck. Um, there's not a full detail engine in there. It's just sort of a a, a uh, bottom, if you will. A oil pan bottom thing here. The cab doesn't open or anything else like that. But it gives you, like I said, a, a pretty good set of instructions. I mean, I really can't terribly complain about this. It's going to be a long project. You're not going to just, you know yee-haw this thing together or anything but uh it's very well laid out as far as what you know, i said tells you what photo etch pieces to use how to bend them where they go it's very good for showing like i said in uh, retrospect if you will where things are um to be uh as far as uh not making you guess a lot of a lot of instruction manuals and this even goes for instruction manuals for uh you know real life model kits will be like hey put this here and uh you know and then the next step they don't actually show you where it's sitting it's a very vague put it here and then there's no where that really wound up going so if you want one of these here is the your information for a and n model trucks uh, they are, as I said, in Latvia. Website here, an-modeltrucks.com. And uh, it is a very cool thing. They make a refrigerated box for the back of this. They also make sort of a utility bed for the back of this as well. I believe that the reefer and the utility bed run on a shorter wheelbase. Now, there's two different wheelbase lengths on a Mercedes Sprinter. Um, one is about 20 inches shorter than the other one. And I think they run the two other things on the short wheelbase. You can just buy the truck without anything on it. Uh, in a long wheelbase or a short wheelbase. And like I said, you obviously can buy the recovery bed by itself. Um, it's a very cool project. They don't sell a whole heck of a lot of other full kits. They sell a Canadian Kenworth W200 conversion, which I believe you use the KW100 uh, cab over that AMT did to make. They make a couple other conversions for a couple of Italy and Revelle of Germany, uh, European trucks as well. Uh, but you know, I, I think this was, this was too cool of a idea and too cool of a subject matter to pass up as far as I was concerned, even at the price it was, um, uh, because it's not like Revell of Germany is going to announce a Mercedes Benz, uh, uh, flatbed truck in the 2020 kits that they're going to do. So, and if they do, well, look at how, look, look at how much money I saved you. <laughs> 
Uh, I do. I, I definitely want to build up the bed, just the bed itself, and see what it looks like. Because, uh, you know, you can definitely see, even if 70 bucks is a little steep for just the bed, uh, buying this bed and putting it on other things, especially if it's a nice long bed, which it looks like it would be. And uh, I have a Diecast International flatbed, Jada, and Zoomon is doing a their own resin flatbed based on a Mitsubishi... Uh, Fuso Cantor, I believe. Although I look like theirs is going to be, if not full detail, at least have an engine in it because uh, Mitsubishi Fuso is a COE or cab over engine. And they've shown pictures of their thing posed with the cab tilted up so you can see the engine. But it will become a point here, I believe, before maybe before the end of the year. I'm not sure exactly sure what kind of uh, timeline Zoomon is working on with theirs, although they just show. They showed the chassis all built up the other day, and they showed the interior all built up the other day as far as getting it out of the 3D printer. Uh, there's a good chance that maybe before the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2020, or the end of 2019, excuse me, and the beginning of 2020, you could build out two, and they're going to be expensive too, I'm sure, uh, as far as the zoom on one. Two resin flatbed recoveries. Get the one from, uh, from Jada, the International. And uh, you could have yourself a fleet of uh, flatbeds, which is something that if you had told me at the beginning of 2019 that I would have, I would have told you you're out of your mind. I think the Jaded Diecast has been around for a couple of years, but as far as these coming out, not something I really saw coming or expected. So anyway, guys, I want to thank you for your patience as we blathered on through this one. I know this video is going to probably be longer than most, uh, even most out of the box or, you know, new stuff to the stash videos, but just want to show you guys uh, this, especially because I think it's just super cool. Super expensive, but super cool. And uh, we'll see you guys on the other side.